Okay, Math 31, let's take a look at solving this cubic equation. And it's saying, hey, solve this by factoring and then using the quadratic formula. So we're gonna go through this. Now, I don't know how long it's been since you factored, but maybe you recognize this as a difference of cubes. And I'm just gonna write that phrase here, difference of cubes. All right, this is literally x cubed minus five cubed. And if you're wondering why, why I'm calling it five cubed, it's, that's, that's because that's what 125 is. So five raised to the third power is 125. So when I say difference of cubes, this is a cubed term, this is a cubed term, and I'm subtracting them, so I'm looking at their difference. So there is a formula for factoring a difference of cubes. You can see it down here on the bottom, but because I can't get it in the same view screen, I'm just gonna write it here so we have it for reference. Whenever you have a cubed minus b cubed, that's gonna turn into, oops, excuse me, let me write this. You have a binomial and a trinomial. You're gonna have a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So you have a binomial, a minus b, and you have a trinomial, a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, that's how you can use the cubic formula to factor this different, uh, not the cubic formula, excuse me, the factoring formula to factor this difference of cubes. And then both of these become prime. There's no way to factor them further than what we have here, which is not to say we can't solve them. We just won't be able to use factoring anymore. We'll have to either go to completing a square or the quadratic formula. All right, so let's take a look at what's playing the role of A and B for this problem. So playing the role of A, in the A position is the letter X, okay? And in the B position, right, A cubed minus B cubed is five because this is the number five cubed. So I'm looking at this and I have X cubed minus five cubed. All right, so I can turn that into a binomial and a trinomial. So instead of A minus B, for our particular problem, it will be X minus five. Now, I wanna go move on to my trinomial. I have a squared, so in this particular instance, it would be x squared. And then I need to take their product, a times b. Well, x times five would be five x. And then I need to do b squared, right? Well, that would be five squared, which would be 25. All right, and I have that is equal to zero. Right, so I have my binomial multiplied to my trinomial, and that's going to equal zero. Okay, now we know from the zero product property that either x minus five is equal to zero or x squared plus five x plus 25 is equal to zero. So this is going to break now into x minus five is equal to zero or x squared plus five x plus 25 is equal to zero. Well, this one's not too bad. I'll just add the five to both sides and there's one of my solutions. Okay, here again, I can't factor it. You've already used your difference of cubes formula and both of these are prime. There's no way to factor these any further. So I'm gonna be forced to either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. I'm gonna opt to use the quadratic formula and I can see A is one, B is five, and C is 25. So from here, I'm gonna be looking at X would be equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times a times c all over two a. And when I simplify this a little bit, let's see what we have here, right? I've got five squared, which is 25. 25 minus, well, four times 25 is 100. So I have 25 minus 100. That's gonna leave me with negative 75. So I have negative five plus or minus the square root of negative 75 all over two, I see I can pull the i out. So I've got negative five plus or minus i root 75 all over two, okay. Um, let's just do a quick little factor tree for 75. 75 is what, 25 and three? This is five and five. So I can see my, my pair of fives. So if I am looking at negative five plus or minus five i root three, over two. Okay, 
Now, there's not a whole lot I can do to this, this expression. I could factor out the 5 if I wanted to, or I could write this, again, I'm going to show you the equivalent form. So you could write this as 5 times negative 1 plus or minus i root 3 over 2. That's one version. Or you could write this as negative 5 halves plus or minus 5i root 3 over 2. Those are all equivalent forms. I don't prefer one over the other. I think just through sheer laziness, I would probably stop here because I, I don't really have anything I can simplify. Two doesn't divide into the fives easily enough. This introduces some uglier looking fractions, even though we have fractions over here. But ultimately, my two solutions, I'm gonna have the real zero at negative five, right? I have, oh, excuse me, positive five, my bad, my bad. I have a real zero at positive five, and I have two imaginary ones at negative five plus or minus five i root three over two. Okay, and just to tie some algebra to a graph, I just want you to see if I had gone in here, let me clear all this out. Oops, this is all stat stuff. We'll get to that later. If I had gone in here and graphed x cubed minus 125, Okay, if you ever wanted to graph one of these, and I'm gonna again hit zoom six, just to reset my window, you can see that, at, you can't see the entire graph, but you see one, two, three, four, five, at positive five, you can see a zero there, right? You can see that my y value is equal to zero. This is an x-intercept. And so I can at least see the graph. The re, or at least see the zero, I should say. I can't even see the whole graph. I'd have to zoom way out in order to have that happen. Um, the reason you don't see two additional x-intercepts is because these are imaginary. They won't show up on your x-y axes because they don't actually exist. All right, so before we leave this example, I'm gonna scooch this all the way up so that we can see some of these formulas here. So again, as you start to review factoring, it's one of those things where I'm supposed to assume we know it, but I, I always see students struggling with this. These are some very common factoring formulas, right? So if you see a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, you know it's a plus b quantity squared. Imagine if you were gonna FOIL out or an inner. Or on the flip of that, if you have a minus 2ab here, you know your binomial was actually a minus b. You can do the difference of squares, so a squared minus b squared. This is probably the one we remember the most often, a minus b, a plus b. We just did a difference of cubes, for example, 7, and here was that binomial and that trinomial. There's also the sum of cubes, right, binomial, trinomial. And just take note that the sum of squares, right, because we have difference of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes, but the sum of squares does not factor. At least it does not factor over the real numbers. You can factor it over the imaginary numbers if you want. But usually when we're factoring, we're sticking to real numbers. All right, so with that, I'm gonna to flip to the next page. We're gonna officially pick up the discriminant and, and see what kind of information that discriminant gives us. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.